We are here getting together to, we're going to do double duty today because there were technical difficulties mm. last week. We had the uh, video recorded, but no audio. And so you could sit and watch us for 20 minutes. Yeah, try, yeah, try to guy. read our lips. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just saying, uh, shout out to Megan for pointing that out. She's like, what happened? She goes, you know, anyway, we had a conversation. I'm like, I don't know what happened. Let's we check are, that yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> we are glad that people, yeah. people watch these and, and enjoy them. So yes, yes. we triple checked the record button. I think we're recording. Well, they wouldn't know if we weren't because they wouldn't be seeing this if... Uh, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll put them. <laughs> it's nice that they, they watch and they want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a double double <laughs> blessing. Double yeah. blessing. Nice, nice. Well, let, we can reach back a little bit. and uh, um, Well, first of all, before we do that, though, we're in the middle of vacation Bible school yeah. week. Oh, and so, we are. Tons of kids. Uh, is it? I think it's over 400 kids okay. at Vacation Bible School, or right at 400. It's either right at or just above, I guess. But um, mm-hmm. that's like a record at Messiah. Um, I mean, even pre-COVID, we were we were three seventies and stuff like that. So yep. what a what a blessing! Yeah, awesome. it's just oh, it's amazing. Love to see all yep. the excitement in the air and day two. Day two. Excitement in the kids and the frazzled adults. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Yep. So anyway, but no, um, just wanting to jump back and, and bridge a little bit. Um, uh, last week, and I, I'm sorry it didn't record because I thought we had a really good, lot of good content uh, coming out of, uh, again, Romans uh, chapter 5, the second half of that. And, uh, and Pastor Dustin, you had preached on the first half of chapter 5, which had a, just an amazing amount of stuff. I mean, just every chapter in Romans mm-hmm. is just chock full. But, uh, but I, I, I had started off by just talking about near-death experiences and kind of getting people to think about, you know, how you would respond had you come close to death. And, and the point was, was that Paul was saying, we all have. And there's death in Adam and we are all a part of Adam's. Um, I have to say that when I, I, I do say when I, the Adam's family, oh, I was like, well, I'm no. part of Adam's family. <laughs> do, and do, I don't, do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping people weren't. You know, I that. wasn't losing anybody. One D, not two. Man. <laughs> yeah, was, we're all part of the family that is that of Adam. That's much um, better. But uh, anyway, but no, but it, it really kind of points back to original sin. It's a condition. It's not just a moral. Uh, or ethical way we describe or define sin, the things we do wrong, the things that we fail to do right. That certainly is a part of sin. But I think even as James says, um, sin begins in the heart. It begins in the mind. Um, it is, it is a, there's a condition that is passed down generation to generation. And so in Adam, we all die. And, and, it, and I was trying to get people to understand it's not just physical death. I mean, there, it, that, that it, was introduced into the world because of sin. So physical death, we, we, we grow old and we pass or through accidents or whatever. But this was about eternal death. This was eternal separation from God. And what I was really trying to get people to understand too was how big the rescue then is. Because if you don't take sin seriously, then, then, the, then the, the rescue isn't that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, that what Jesus did for us. We have death in Adam. We have life in Christ. And I love, again, this part of Romans chapter 5, that second half, is a is kind of a culmination. It's a summary of everything he's covered up to then. And scholars agree. It is just, it's so jam-packed, but so beautifully written. And so Paul just un, you know, unpeel or peels this, um, this, this onion, if you will, layer by layer by layer. And he's saying, I want you to understand the that in one man... Adam, all die. Now in one man, Jesus, all can live. And I love in that text, it says that, you know, death reigned in us, but through Christ, we reign in life. So it's, it's just, just a beautiful thing. I had one question that I'd answered last week that somebody was asking that I did not cover in the message, because again, there was just too much content to, to cover everything, was, okay, what is it talking about the law and, and it wasn't written down, but from Adam to Abraham, people still died. So, but then the law came and it increased the sin mm-hmm. and then grace abounded even more. And so they were saying, you know, how, how, what does that mean? Does it, you know, what was there a law? What, 
what what kind of faith, what kind of law, everything. So I think in a really quick summary way, what it meant, what what I, what I try to explain is the same law existed between Adam and Abraham. Um, and if you have to go all the way to Moses getting the 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 uh, the code, the moral code, the, the law uh, on Mount Sinai, um, the same law existed. Um, sin still caused death. Adam, uh, I mean, like uh, Cain killing Abel, he knew it was wrong. Adam and Eve knew it was wrong when they listened to the serpent. So the law was written on their hearts. Um, that same consequence of law existed. But why it says the sin increased was um, if, and I think the example I even gave, I was like, if you're driving down roads that aren't marked for speed limit, but there is a speed limit, and so you're speeding everywhere, uh, and, and you're like, you're doing something wrong. That's a great example. But all of a sudden, now it's posted. Now you know it's wrong. So now you're speeding and you know it's wrong. You kind of knew it was wrong ahead of time. Now you know for sure it's wrong. So sin increased because all of a sudden we have God's law in front of us written down. He's like, oh, don't, you know, uh, don't have any other gods before me. Don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain, et cetera. Don't murder. Don't steal. Oh, I shouldn't go 75 around this corner. Got yeah, it. right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't know that was bad. Yeah, so <laughs> it basically just it brought front of mind what people mm -hmm. already knew in their hearts was yeah. wrong. And so that sin increased, but then Paul's saying, but, but grace abounded even more. Mm -hmm. And I love in that text, it's this, this flooding theme. It is this, you are overwhelmed in grace. And so I, anyway, I it just, it was a, I think it's just a beautiful text and, and certainly one that, that helps us celebrate that, um, that we have this gift of life through Christ. So, Something I did not say last week, um, I remember thinking it, but I didn't say it, um, but today I'll say it. Uh, one of the issues I think we have probably globally, but for sure in our culture, is a lot of people today, I think <clears throat> they have this assumption that they're fine, like I'm fine, mm -hmm. and, and don't realize like, no, I'm broken by sin. And the point being then, it makes it difficult to share the good news of Jesus if they don't know that there's a reason that they need the good news of Jesus. So again, within this text, I think what Paul is trying to do, which again, in this section, it's kind of a transition that's mm -hmm. happening now. Mm -hmm. And so with everything that has led up to this, as you talked about, really trying to condense this in yes. a way of saying, look, there, there's a reason yeah. We need justification. There's a reason that we need to be made righteous again. It's because if you go all the way back to Adam, we're all affected by this thing, by well, sin. And, and we're I, not. And, we're not fine. Right. And I appreciate you saying. And I, I think the one of the things I brought up in the message was, and, and it was around that slide. If the sin isn't that bad, the rescue isn't that big. That's that's what made me think of it. Right. Yeah. Was was, and, and I mentioned this like the society wants to keep moving the goalposts. They want to redefine sin, because. We've, we've been taught and our kids, grandkids are being taught that anything that makes you feel bad is wrong. It is not, you mm -hmm. know, I, I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of all the ways you could explain that it's evil, whatever. And so eradicate it. From yeah. Eradicate it. Yeah. So, so if you, if you can redefine sin, it's kind of the, it's the end run around God. Um, instead of going to God to feel healed and whole and hopeful through grace, I'll redefine sin so I don't have to feel bad about my life. You know, we're, we're, we're in Pride Month now in June, and there's this concerted effort across the world mm -hmm. to say, let's accept, condone, celebrate um, behaviors that are antithetical to God's word. Mm -hmm. and, and if we can convince everybody to be okay with that, mm -hmm. then we'll feel better about ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, for the people caught up in that lifestyle. And there is no amount of acceptance by the entire world that's going to heal that kind of hurt because it's against no. God's design. That's right. Sin is always against God's design. Mm -hmm. So you have death in sin, but you have life in Christ. So I think to your point, Pastor Dustin, is that we cannot downgrade the seriousness of sin in an effort to make ourselves feel better mm -hmm. because it's a temporary feel better. So what I what I've shared before in other contexts is we need to reestablish again the definition of what God says is good. 
Because that, again, going back to Adam and Eve, that's what I believe is happening today. We, in our world, mm-hmm. we're just redefining what's good and what's, what's evil and what's, what's not. And so much of what our culture says today is good. God would say, no, right. that's not good. Right. And the things that God says is good, the world looks at and says, mm, no, I don't think so. And so we, we've, we're just, we keep yeah. moving to your point away from the truth that God sets before us in his word. And I think yeah. that's part of then, I didn't get to hear the message yet. I got to go back and listen to it. But um, I think in chapter six, some of the people Paul sees, they're trying to take what they're hearing and like, well, okay, mm-hmm. let what me just try to make segue. this work to my advantage. Great that uh, yeah. if I just keep yeah. sinning, right? God loves to forgive. So all right, well, I'll he just asks keep. logical questions. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, in real quick, I think it's always re- important, re- uh, important to remind the original letter didn't have chapters. Right. And so we're you it's could a, have kept just rolling through. <laughs> it's, it's a fluid yeah. movement. And mm-hmm. so to your exact point, here's all this information. Now, Paul goes, let's ask some questions. And I thought you did an amazing job uh, on Sunday. Again, just that passion around baptism and everything. Just, just awesome. But, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's what Paul's doing right now uh, and is going to fly into this week is he's shifting from, okay, I've covered justification pretty heavily. And so God has done this work. Grace is what we live under. Grace abounds and sin no longer has dominion over us. And he's about to shift in, but he's going to keep working through you. And it's going to go from justification to sanctification. That's this, this was the bridge to it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and it, really starts in, in many ways in baptism. You know, it's, it's a way that we can be certain the Holy Spirit's been given to us and our, our, our walk in faith, our newness of life has begun. And um, as I was reading through it, you know, there's all this death and life and sin and, we, you know, this and that. And it goes back and forth. And I just thought, okay, I need to get into Paul's headspace here. And I couldn't help but flip to Acts because mm, that's where yeah. his conversion yeah. began. And that's what I start with. And uh, I read through it and I go, man, you know, if, if, if you know Paul and, and you know, he was Saul at a time and his name change wasn't specifically with his conversion, but uh, it kind of ended up that way. And, and what we came to know is the apostle Paul, if you don't read Acts, you think, man, this guy gets it. And that's what yeah. I talked a lot about. Yeah. Like this guy gets justification. He knows, I mean, some of the best doctrinal points are made by this man and he lived it out. He owned his faith. He was, he was living that newness of life. But if you know him before, if you know that mm-hmm. Acts version of Paul, you go, this guy was a bounty hunter chasing people down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've heard people all the time be like, there's these, there's these mortal sins that, you know, like can't be forgiven or something. I don't, I don't know how they, they, you know, the why oh, I can't be forgiven or they can't be forgiven or da, 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 or this sin's greater than this sin. And I go, well, always go back to Paul <laughs> Yeah, because Paul was the biggest enemy of God and what he was doing through Jesus. And what did God do? Completely redeemed him, converted him, made him die and died to sin and gave him a newness of life. And, and he did it with baptism, rise and be baptized. He was rising yeah. and baptized. And so that's where we started and we continue on. And I think it's hard because uh, we end up going a couple different places with it. one place we go with it is, okay, I died and I have this newness of life. Well, I shouldn't sin anymore. <laughs> Well, Paul talks about a thorn that he has. He doc- talks about the thing that he doesn't want to do that he keeps doing. And, you know, he he, he, un- he understands what, and that's what I got to, I, I extended what Pastor John just said, is he understands how real sin is in his life, but he understands how big the rescue is. And that's, that's, that's Paul and that's sanctification. Yeah. And so we can take from Paul, he's not different than us. He's just like us. And his sins may be different. His conversion may be different, but... We go through the same thing in baptism. It's that we have this newness of life and God sends us out into a world that's broken and it's going to have us continue to sin, but we're going to continually be living under not the law, but his grace. And uh, I think that came together really well. And now this week we're going to expand that and talk about what it continues to mean to live under God's grace, Mm -hmm. what it means to have him work through us. And that gets us more into the sanctification that is a result of that justification, his good, good work on the cross. I just, I think when we fully embrace what Paul's trying to communicate here, it leads to a life of joy. Mm -hmm. You know, I I said this in my message a couple of weeks ago, Paul's not trying to guilt us into gratitude. 
you know, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll just tell you everything Jesus did for you. And if you're not thankful, shame on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could say that in one respect, but that would be guilting you into gratitude. He's like, I just want to paint this picture for you that I know you know is already true because you know the brokenness in your life. You need to know the reality. yeah. Yeah. But when you do, when you realize just how close you were to sudden death, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I joked with, um, goes back in, in movies a little bit, uh, uh, with Leslie Nielsen and, <laughs> and, you know, and, and one of his movies and he's, he, I forget what the circumstance is, but he's reflecting on it and he's like, ah, I've just noticed things I've never seen before in my life. He said, a beautiful sunrise dew on the, on the petal of a, of a rose, stoplights, you know, it's a, <laughs> you know, you think typical Leslie, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but the point is that if we truly embrace everything that's happened here, you can't help but be joy filled. Yeah. And then you can't help but share that with somebody who's hurting mm-hmm. and people are hurting all around us. Yeah. And, and Paul's just, I don't think he's trying to grab the Romans by the collars and shake them. He's kind of wrapping an arm around him going, listen, I, I, and I think you mentioned this last night, this is the first time he's writing a letter without having visited them. Yeah. So he's pouring all of it out. And it's like he's putting his arm around him going, I just, man, I want you to see what I see. Yeah. I want exactly. you to experience what I'm experiencing. I, you know, <clears throat> this, is, this is amazing stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just think it's really powerful. And that and that's really what I was trying to get at a little bit is like this is a reality that Paul knows. And yeah. I think we know, but he's really trying to say, hey, this is big and this is every day. You know, and I and I about got the thing I didn't get into is about the, you know, Luther talked about, especially in the small catechism, you know, it's it's daily dying and rising, yeah. right? Yeah. It's being reminded each and every day. And that's why I talked about remembering our baptism. That's what it is. It's remembering each and every day. I mean, we need that every second, like breathing to remember. Yeah. We have this new life because of Jesus Christ. And when we continue to do that, and I'm starting to, to make the sign of the cross a lot more, and, you know, I know it's it's not something we're um, in, in Scripture told to do. It's adiaphora, but it, it's a rem- if you do it to remember your baptism, yeah. it is powerful. If you do it because you feel like you have to yeah. do it in no, some church... The, yeah, you know, they his, you know, they strongly they, encourage. They, it's not. like if you don't cross, you're wrong. You know, but yeah. this is just a reminder yeah. of your baptism. And, and I was talking to somebody about that. Um, they said as soon as you were talking about baptism, I remember I was baptized in the fourth grade, and it was this powerful pastor, and I remember him, and it was a very mm-hmm. special moment for him. And you know, he said we need to remember our baptism more. He said, you know, and you need, you know, talking to confirmands about that. That's what confirmation is. It's remembering. Yeah. And expanding on your baptism. And, well, I, and, and being sure to remind people, because in the Lutheran tradition, most of us were baptized yeah. as infants. I don't remember my baptism, yeah. but I think your your slide from Luther was really important. Yeah. I, I am, am baptized, baptized. Yeah. Not, not I was That's baptized. Right. I live the baptized life. Once and for all was applied Once, to yeah. me. Yeah. I like that, yeah. that sentiment. So remembering that you are baptized, I think, is probably more yeah. helpful for people in the Lutheran tradition. For sure. Uh, yeah. different and remembering than, the well, day. Yeah. Well, in well, different, yeah, yeah. I mean, fourth grade, you yeah. know, there are some experiences yeah. that I think are amazing. And, and mm-hmm. if that's your, your world, then great. Yeah. But for a lot of us, it's yeah. remembering that, yes, I was, mm-hmm. am baptized. Well, and that was one of the points I thought of. I, I mentioned it in, in detail, but I know a ton of people that were baptized as an infant that are sanctified. The Holy Spirit lives in them. And they are, you know, it mm-hmm. it took, you know, yeah. that once yeah. and for all was applied to them. <laughs> and, and there are people that can remember theirs that, that had an experience and the same thing is true. So I talked a little bit about that too. Yeah. The thing though, I, th- I would add to that though, that I think we sometimes overlook is that it is a one-time baptism and there is that one time, that justification. But as it comes to sanctification, yes. there is that which we've talked about. Yes. A daily dying, a daily drowning out of the old yeah. Adam. So mm-hmm. the effects of baptism take effect every day and throughout the course yep. of the day, too. Yep. So that we have to drown out, and it's not us doing it, it's God doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, that old sinful self, the old Adam, so that the new, mm-hmm. I think that's what Paul's talking about, 
Right. That Are you preaching this Sunday? <laughs> I am preaching. Well, good, because yeah. you <laughs> seem to have a pretty <laughs> firm <laughs> grasp on this. So this would be great. Well, and, and real quick, I want to make sure that, and this is why you can't include everything in every sermon, right. but I want to make sure, sure people understand we do not hold to a once saved, always saved right. theology. Yep. It, it is a one baptism. I talked about that more at 8 right. o'clock, and I yeah. for time reasons. It is, it, one yep. baptism is, is sufficient uh, yep. for once and for all. Um, but people can fall away from the faith. Oh, yeah. and, and so there is a daily growing. There is a daily dying and rising. There's a lot of the sanctification stuff that, that is important to the Christian life. But I think that's what Paul's getting into in this next yes. part of, of chapter 6, because he it's not a therefore, but it's a what then. Well, I think he's almost asking the same yeah. question yes, yes. again yeah. to, yep. to, yeah. to really build on it. So. And the terminology I used, and, and, and I did talk about it a little bit, but it is good to highlight, is we have this this once and for all that's applied to us, this reality that Christ has done for us, basically taking us to the moment of the cross and including us in that, that moment in history of salvation. And it's the salvation that if we don't turn away from it, we will never die. We right. can turn away from it. But I love that quote from Luther when he said, we, ha- we live this spiritual life. And by hearing God's word and, in, and seeing baptism, coming to the Lord's table, we will never turn from it. He, yeah. God gives yeah. us those things that strengthen and preserve our faith. And that's why we, I mean, this is stuff we say every Sunday. And so hopefully now it's connected to something like Romans 6. And you're like, okay, yeah, this is, this is daily dying and rising. These are things God sent to us to strengthen and preserve our faith. Wow. So if you ever are feeling, not that you're going to turn away, but if you're feeling any doubt or, or roller coaster around your faith, remember your baptism, hear God's word, and come to the Lord's table where yeah. you can have that assurance and the strengthening of your faith. It's like, this is what God does and has done for his people for a long time. Yep. So you're going to tackle this next part of six. First, I'm going to go listen to Andy's sermon because I've heard so many good things about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So we were worshiping in Minnesota with my family for nephew's graduation. So, but. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to listen to that first, and then, yes, I'm tackling the second part of the six. Well, it, and I, just as the preview, as we get further into Romans, it is Paul's struggles, and we're getting mm-hmm. to seven, chapter seven. It just, right. It's what does our life look like mm-hmm. as a result of this gift of justification? And he talks about, you know, the caption online is a slave to righteousness. And that, that sounds like an mm-hmm. oxymoron almost, that it's like, uh, you know, we can talk about slave to sin. Slave to freedom. Yeah, slave to freedom. <laughs> I'm a slave to freedom. But Paul uses that language, and uh, and it was shocking. I mean, that would have been a shocking yeah. thing, you know, to, to talk about in the Greek, a doulos, a slave. And so, yeah. I think that is where he says, like, you know, I'm using human terms because yeah, yeah. you can't understand God. Yeah, you know, yeah, like right, he kind of right, jumps right. in of like, I'm using, putting him in your terms. little shock and all, though, is yeah. never, oh, never mm-hmm. you know, so I it'll be good. Now, it'll then. be good, so... Looking, forward, Looking to forward to it and continuing our journey into the summer. Summer strong, right? Right. Summer strong. Staying saw a lot of awesome, awesome people I hadn't caught up with in a while this Sunday, whether yeah. kids were back from afar or, or different things and like that. This so. Sunday, VBS kids will be singing yeah. and stuff, it's awesome. so it's going to be a fun. But there will not be the VBS backdrop. And next right. year, you guys are going to get a theme better. Because you you yeah, planned. I had a yeah, lot of opportunities yeah. to. You had opportunities yeah. to be wearing some, some amazing <laughs> Hawaiian clothing. shirts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could have. I tried yeah. to just finding stop at dad jokes clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Preach with a snorkel on. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many <laughs> opportunities. I had a lot of people come up to <laughs> me and say yeah. there was a lot of missed opportunities. Yep, so. yep. So next next year, yep. we're gonna make actually it for Andy, it would be probably board shorts, right? That's oh man, that would be. A special day to preach in, <laughs> preach in board shorts. Yeah, so. you to, you better, at least a Hawaiian You better shirt. wait till you get all the way through seminary. I was going to say, there's, the I'm still shorts. on the chopping yeah, block yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I'm sure. yeah. <laughs> they can cut you free at any I'm moment. Sure. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yep. Still kicking the tires. Yep. Yep. All right. Thanks for getting together. We yep. This recorded. We know it oh, did. Right. If it didn't record, nobody's going to hear I'll believe that, it so. when I hear it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, Thomas. No, I'll have faith. Have a great week. Thank you.